Feast your doing? eyes on these oily pecs. We got some barbarians coming up. Nice! It's barbarian time, and what better way to introduce it than with a game called Barbarian 2. <laughs> the sequel. More barbarians. <laughs> that's Yeah, I think that's, that's enough exclamation exciting. points. I just yeah. want to go, <laughs> that's, that's too much. Buff. Now, y'all are familiar with the barbarian, but did you know they made a sequel? He's back. He's bigger. And he's more barbarian than ever? Uh-huh. Another intro here. Let's go ahead and give us unlimited lives, because uh, you'll see. Ooh, now, I picked yeah. this game because it has an okay intro, and then it has the best disc switch screen I have ever seen in my life. You will not believe this. It really is one of the coolest things. Also, the whole Barbarian thing was kind of a coincidence. I was putting together a list of games to play for this stream, and I just noticed most of them had Barbarians in them for some reason. That was cool as hell, Danny. And now it's playing some rip-off, uh... Oh, goddammit. What's that song? I fucking love this system! The best song Black Sabbath never wrote. To the dungeon of drags. Choose your warrior. Oh, well, shit. Okay. Dude. Lady. Let's be the lady barbarian. The barbarous. Get ready. Are you ready? Did, I'm, I'm getting there. Are you sure? Insert disc two. <laughs> it takes a lot to, to impress me these days. Not much takes me aback in the world of video games, but when I saw that, I collapsed laughing. I could not... I just... It's so good. That's... it's just perfect. Other loading screens just cannot compete. Now as for the game itself, Sorry to say, it's not nearly as interesting. But that skeleton told me to put in disc two, and that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, this game was definitely made by the share zone, as folks are mentioning. <laughs> yes. I work all day, and you're asking me to switch discs? Fuck a bunch of that. Share zone. Alright, so... Ow! Stop! Stop! Hey! Quit kicking me in the ass! Oh my god, you're getting your ass kicked! Oh my god! Help! Stop! Stop! This thing is a literal ass-kicking machine! There's nothing else it can do, it's just a pair of legs that kick ass. Dear god, please let me turn around. Okay. I'm now doing this by process of elimination. <laughs> Here we go. Here we okay. go. Taste my foot. <laughs> You're... I hate fucking footboy here. <laughs> Get out of my fucking life, footboy. It's a real game of footsies here. <laughs> a lot of good grunts. Uh, good background detail. I like the head on a pike there. Danny, I don't know how to tell you this, but this looks like it kind of sucks. It kind of sucks. It would suck a lot more if I didn't have unlimited lives. I'll tell you that much. Ow. 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 Oh! <laughs> okay, so I have played this before. To get across the uh, river of lava, you need to hold the attack button and push in a certain direction. Uh, I forgot what that direction was. Maybe it's back? Yes, it is. It's back. Oh, God! Well... What the fuck is that?! What the f... I hate everything about video games! I'm not sure whether to quit or just doggedly continue on. Oh, my God, I just decapitated it. That was cool. Hey, I did it! We did it! We got past you... the first screen! My reward is another one of those horrible <laughs> birds! fucked up chicken! 
<laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of liking this game. So, again, Amiga only had one action button, so in order to uh, do your attacks, you have to hold the action button and push in a different direction. Like here, I'm pushing down, and this is what happens if you push left and up, and you do a spin thing if you push back. But these monsters, man, they are relentless. And there's nothing else to do in this game other than fight. And now I'm going backwards, I guess. Okay, let's go back to the beginning of the game. <laughs> this is working out great. That's Barbarian 2! Barbarian 2! Uh, weirdly frustrating for how little time I spent with it. I gotta say, few games get under your skin as much as that game did. <laughs> let's move on. Blade Warrior. Also fits into the Barbarian motif. This one was also suggested by our friend Tepid Snake. Let's hope this one actually works. So what else can the Amiga offer us in terms of uh, Barbarianism? Well, they have quite a bit to say. Quite a few games explored the, the whole Barbarian subgenre. And even beyond just like shirtless Barbarians, a lot of games just put you in control of a dude with a sword. And those would I, those I would also consider Barbarian games. I stream my rules. <laughs> In my stream, this is a whoa, this is cool looking. But look at this game. Whoa, this is like an indie game before, like back in the day. Yeah, right? Like every indie game nowadays does the whole silhouette thing, but no one did this back then. It was just this game. And it looks super cool. And unfortunately, there's little detail in your character, so I can't tell if he's shirtless or not. But if he is, that's a barbarian. Uh, if he's not, it's probably like a knight or something. So in this game, you wander around collecting stuff. You can pick up these frogs. And also these rats. And you can use them to, like, brew potions or something later on. So you navigate to different planes by going through these gates. And there's basically a whole open world here for you to explore. And what you saw at the beginning was how the game begins. It doesn't really tell you anything about what's going on. You have to actually learn the story by playing it. I also like how this game has no real HUD. Like, uh, the moon up there is actually your life meter. Wait, really? The moon? Uh-huh. Oh, that's neat! Yeah, otherwise all your inventory is handled through a different sub-menu by pausing the game. I, I can't get over how modern this game looks. It really does feel like a modern uh, Metroidvania style game. Like, yeah. Uh, just visually, how, how like the just everything is environmental, like, you know, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. Also has a similar control scheme as uh, the last game we played. Hold the button, push different directions for different attacks. That sort of thing would seem kind of limiting, but these games actually made uh, good use of the limited control schemes they had available. And the whole atmosphere is really cool too. I like that there's no music. No music may have been an intentional design choice here, but for other games it's uh, a necessity. A lot of Amiga games only let you listen to music or hear sound effects, but not both. Mm. Like I'm quite Rise sure of the why Robots. that is. It, Rise of the Robots, one of many, yeah. <laughs> Easter Mage. Ooh, he's got some eggs for us. Let's go. It's so simple, but it really evokes a specific mood. It really is. That's just it's just what these Amiga really games believe, do yeah. the best. Just in terms of mood and setting, that's mm -hmm. where they excel a lot of the time. It's really cool, actually. I'm glad we're playing the system. Yeah, and there's a lot to see here. There's a whole big quest. I ain't gonna get into it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think but we can. But you can see the gist of it. If this yeah. looks cool, play it. I think this also came out on DOS, I want to say. Oh. That would... So you might be able to play that version too. But I want more barbarians. I want to see I want to see that glistening chest. There I is want... no glistening here. I want more flexing buff men in my life. Agreed. No shirts, no shoes. No problem. <laughs> right. Welcome to the Amiga. <laughs> This is one of the best remembered Amiga games, I think, at least in uh, terms of latter day opinion. Like back in the day, hardly anyone had ever heard of this game. This is a game called Lionheart. Uh, 
Now this game here, super late release, a really dedicated development team, just people who really believed in their craft, and you can totally see it in the results here. Also a really unfortunate story. Uh, I think I may be thinking of a different game, but if this is the one I'm thinking of, like there was a, a text file hidden in the game's files basically saying, please buy this game. <laughs> Ah. We put a ton of work into it, and it's super good, and you know it's super good, and we can't keep making these unless you buy them. Basically begging uh, pirates not to, to pirate the game. Yeah, please don't. This game looks great, though. It already looks super good. And in terms of gameplay, this game impressed me more than anything I played in preparation for this stream. It plays really, really well. So let's go ahead and get to that. Good old Lionheart. Nothing could be done. He'd have to make the entire journey on foot. He sighed and entered the swamps. Guess I gotta go through the swamps. Uh... It's hard out here for a barbarian. You think life is simple? You just got like a tunic and a, and a sword? Nah, man. Nah. Oh. So look at this game. Look at the character animation, especially. It has a similar control scheme to what we just played. You hold the button to uh, do these different attacks. This is if you push forward. This is if you push up. This is if you push down and forward. What is with that guy? What is with that just And this buff. unfortunately does not run at full speed, so the sound is skipping a little. But yeah. look at this damn game. Just the background detail, and the number of moves you have, and the I character love, animation, and basically I love, everything. I love that sky! But most of all, what impressed me was the gameplay, which is actually super tight and really good. You actually have a great degree of control over your jumps. And he's kind of floaty. Which uh, actually offsets the difficulty involved in pushing up to jump. I made really nice concessions for the sake of controls. Also, you can run. It's got momentum. It's got spooky creatures. It's got barbarians. What I'm saying is this, this is the perfect game. I'm just enthralled by this good buff boy. He's <laughs> he just is a good buff it. boy. Also, that just I love that radiant sky. That's really nice. It does look really good. I like that effect. Oh god, people are uh, quoting Matt Furness here in chat. Because <laughs> they're talking about uh, messages in games. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. He will break your legs. Mm -hmm. And that's a promise. <laughs> and the platforming here is actually kind of challenging. You'll notice they already introduced these trick platforms that rotate on you. So the platforming isn't... Uh, simple and straightforward like it is in so many other Amiga games. It has some nuance to it. And the limited time I've played of this, it makes me think more of Act Razor than anything else. This feels really Act razor -y to me. There we go. I guess in terms of looks, it's more Act Razor 2, and in uh, gameplay, it's more Act Razor 1. That's for all you Act Razor nerds out there. Do you exist? Am I the only one? <laughs> Probably. But yeah, if you're into that game, check this one out. Check out Buff Boy Central. Yeah. Even Buffer Boys. Oh my god! Look at this background. What? Look at that shit. That is awesome! You cannot get that many colors on a Sega Genesis, I'm sad to say. Legit, only Amiga! Mm-hmm, only You're Amiga. I'm not kidding! Kick this spider in the head. Come on, spider. Walk into my foot. There we go. And everything dies and explodes really nicely. Just a ton of work put into this game's visuals. I, I'm sorry, I'm just enthralled. It's jump. super impressive, right? This is the result of uh, developers having years to work on the Amiga and really uh, being able to perfect their craft. 
And these are developers who really believed in the system and wanted to see a, a successful game for it. And unfortunately, that never happened. So the people who made this uh, obviously closed up their company afterwards. Hmm. Whether or not that's due to piracy, that's uh, up for debate, but it happened. And later on, the developers of this went on to Psygnosis, of course, hmm. where they made games like Flink. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, he does have dainty boots, too. He's a, <laughs> a little bit dainty. He is so good. He knows he looks good. Gets a little bit stuck up about it. Uh, Thunderx mentions the uh, demo scene for the Amiga, and yeah, they've got a demo scene. Too. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Like, what we've seen so far in terms of intros and cracks only scratches the surface in terms <laughs> of uh, what people have made for uh, demo purposes. People have pushed this machine way further than it ever intended to go. Oh no! <laughs> you got... Oh! <laughs> Don't cry! I know Macaw played through this. Maybe he has an archive of that, so maybe look for that. Yeah, this is, this is a super good game, though. If you're ever looking into the Amiga, definitely look into this one. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. The way dude. he flops! I love him! I really do. Only Amiga, Danny. Only Amiga. Alright, what are we doing next? So let's move on to another game people may have heard of. But if they have, they probably don't think very much of it. This is sort of Sodan, or Sodan. Now, if you've heard of this game at all, you've probably either seen or played the Sega Genesis port, which is infamously terrible. Just the worst thing. Uh, what Electronic Arts in particular did back then is they licensed all these Amiga games and released them early on for the Sega Genesis. They licensed stuff like uh, Battle Squadron, uh, The Killing Game Show, which was released as Fatal Rewind over here. And yeah, how about that effect? Sort of Sodan! <laughs> and if you've seen the Electronic Arts version of Sort of Sodan... Oh, here we go! <laughs> it is, it is oh, kind of poopy. I'm excited, yeah. Chad is not excited about this. Oh my god. They're... We'll do the dude. Okay. He looked pretty buff and mm -hmm. oily. He can handle it. This effect, folks, please. <laughs> We're really proud of that effect, okay? Ooh, any drive. How nice. So polite. Yeah, you could have multiple disk drives with the Amiga, but not every game recognizes them. Some just makes you swap disks out of a single drive. But some games do allow that. Like this one. So obviously the games that Electronic Arts ported had to have some degree of popularity on the Amiga in order to uh, justify a Genesis port. And with Sword of Sedan, you, you look at the results and you're like, why did you port this? This game is shit. Did they use just... Okay, I have so many questions. First of all... Did they use, like, the MS Paint uh, default spray brush? Or maybe the Deluxe Paint de default, uh, you know, spray can for the background? Because <laughs> that could've... is bad. That's bad. I'm a little bad. Not a fan, not a fan. Um, his walk. He's, as, as a dude who's got hip issues and back issues, I'm like, dude. Well, you didn't have much recourse back in the Barbarian days, you he know? He needs he to just stretch a little more. Look at his gait. He needs to at least... At least some lunges, dude. You, oh my god. If nothing god. else, he has a cape, alright? He's a barbarian with a cape. You don't see those very often. Oh god, Peter, an opponent comparing this game to China Warrior. Yes, he's got a China Warrior feel. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the Genesis version known for its large characters, but looking back, they weren't much larger than other Genesis games like Last Battle. They were actually kind of unimpressive. Here... They take up half the damn screen. Like, more than half, actually. These characters are gi gigantic. I, 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 I'm gonna turn up for a second. I love the way they go, ugh, when they, like, try to hit you. Ooh, like, that's so good! Ugh, ugh, ugh. Gosh. And looking at the Genesis one, you're like, what the hell, this is terrible. But this, you can, you can actually see what they were going for. They really wanted to make a game with huge, massive characters. Ugh. And they succeeded. And when you don't port that, you don't port anything, because the rest of this game is garbage. <laughs> but if nothing else, this is a real uh, good-looking game. And I imagine it sold itself through screenshots really well. 
Oh yeah, then, that's, yeah, that would look nice. But then people had to play it, and uh, <laughs> that's a problem. Stop! <sighs> Later on in the game, there's also fun stuff like uh, invisible pits that you can fall into and instantly die. Oh, there's also potions. I used a zapper potion there. Kind of throws me off. It makes you use the keyboard. Can I make it? So, not to everyone's taste, but, you know, some people just want games that push the power of their computer. And what better way to impress your friends than with this game? It was Sword of Sodan. Bigger barbarians than any other system, guaranteed. That's the Amiga promise. <laughs> Biggest barbarians, guaranteed. <laughs> we are not bullshitting you. These guys are huge. And in my research, I've kind of enjoyed going back and playing these original versions of the game. Because, again, a lot of the appeal gets lost when you port them to inferior console hardware. And uh, for Amiga games in particular, the aesthetics are the real big part of the experience. <laughs> Thanks, God. <laughs> and if nothing else, it gives you resolution. Like, okay, this is why they ported the game. This would have imp impressed some people. The mystery is solved. As for why Electronic Arts screwed it up so bad, I don't know. You'll have to ask them. But if you're gonna play Sword of Sudan, play it on the Amiga. That's my recommendation. Better yet, don't play it at all. <laughs> the way they just fall over is so... Blah. Beautiful. I'm speedrunning. Only Amiga. Is there an Amiga speedrun scene? There should be. Anyone uh, speedrun Crazy Frog? I mean Super Frog. <laughs> crazy Frog Not is Crazy different. Frog. Super... Oh shit! Oh my god, that dude! That, that, bar that, that's a beefier, bigger boy. Can you, can you defeat... No. I'm gonna, I'm gonna poke him. Ugh. I'm gonna give you such a poke. Yeah. Oh, he poked me. <laughs> and now we have to insert a disc to load the game over screen. My favorite part <laughs> of the Amiga experience, by far. I love it. I love this game system. So Insult good. to injury is what they call it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, come on. You could have done way better than oh, that. Oh, that sucked really bad. That I'm sorry. Sucked. No. I'm not even... No, try again. That's cool, though. The Hall of Fame. The Hall the of skeleton Fame of Skeletons. Fame. Sword of Sudan. Another barbarian game you can play for your Amiga. Let's move on. We got more barbs to go through. Who's your favorite barb, Alex? Uh... Not the barbs on cactuses, those hurt. Um, I yeah. do like... Ooh, Conan's a good barb. He's mm. a barb everyone knows. He's a likes. classic barb. Thor is not really a barb, but sometimes he can... Ooh, the International Cracking Service, hold on. Mmm, the icy <gasps> Trash City, Danny! Trash City. Can we move? I've only heard it described in Legends. Let's move to Trash City, Alex. So this uh, is Myth 2. Uh, not a barbarian game, this version you're about to see, but it was retrofitted to be a barbarian game in a way that I find pretty interesting. The System 3 game, the people who brought you, I don't know, Super Putty? What else did they do? Uh, Super Putty? Yeah, Super also? Putty. I wish I knew. I'm sorry, folks. Super Putty, another Amiga platformer that for some reason was remade for the PS4. Uh, you can buy a disc copy of that game. A remade Amiga game with very little in the way of improvements or enhancements. You can get that. This is another game with a cool intro. You just gotta enter a different mindset, man. You know? You can't just expect instant gratification with these games. You have to sit down at your Amiga with a drink and just let the game load up for five or ten minutes. Really soak in the atmosphere. It is kind of... It, it's a lot like prog rock. You have to experience it with a headphone, two yeah. really nice ones. You yeah. have to you have to look at it from a different perspective than you'd look at it from uh, console games. 
God, everyone talking about that putty squad. Yeah, putty squad. That's what it is. Oh, man. <laughs> I bought that game. I don't know why. So here we have another side-scrolling platformer. Dude is shirtless, but he does not look like a barbarian to me. However, uh, this game was later ported to the Nintendo Entertainment System, and it was released as a Conan the Barbarian game. If you played that... Well, there you go! I'm really sorry, because that port is completely horrible. We were just talking about how these games lost a lot of their uh, appeal when they were ported to other platforms. None so, none more so than maybe uh, Conan for the NES. If you've never seen how that game looks, do yourself a favor and look up a YouTube video and just compare how this looks right here with the way the NES port looks. It, it's a travesty. Tiny characters, just completely opaque gameplay that makes no sense. Just a reminder, just to let everyone know, I really approve of all the skeletons we're seeing right now. They're oh, all yeah. good. I like the one that's hanging around, just kind of... You make a barbarian game, game, you gotta have some skeletons in it. That's that's actually one of the best things about them. Look at that skeleton, it's a little knife, he's so good. Oh. Hey, I don't think you should go down there, by the way. Yeah, probably a bad idea. And in this game, believe it or not, you push up to jump. In the NES version, you push down to jump. Yeah, K Price just mentioned that. That's awful. Why? <laughs> they didn't even get that right. And here you can actually tell what everything is and what your objective is. Everything is so poorly defined in the, in, in the NES one, it's like impossible to play. Don't do that, <laughs> by the way. That's not recommended. Oh. Need this. Also, if you spent any amount of time with the NES one, you were probably stuck in this first level because the game never tells you what to do whatsoever. What you gotta do is you need to... Is this how you do it? Yeah, there we go. That's a thing you have to do to beat this level. And then you have to go search that skeleton, I think? You need the knife to cut that guy down, which you can only get by fighting skeletons. Oh, here we go. Oh, I got a back attack. Look at that. Like, ugh. How cool is my Fuck dude? You. So once again, the port, absolute garbage. Original game, uh, there's a game here, <laughs> believe it or not. Someone intended to make a fun game at some point, and uh, later on, people ruined it and made the NES version. This goes to show. I find this interesting. Maybe I'm the only one. <laughs> I think like, it's cool. He my only like... exposure to these games was in the shitty ports, and playing the originals really makes me understand uh, the limitations in uh, console hardware, and also mm -hmm. in just these uh, the original intentions behind these games. It's really cool that this whole library is here to explore, even if it is extremely difficult to get up and running. It's what I like about the Amiga. Yeah, Chad's talking about saying he looks kind of like Wolverine. He kind of does. Yeah. This weird... This could have been a Wolverine game. Should have been like a Wolverine game. Then you gotta fight this thing. That guy's cool. Well, there you go! But I don't know how to fight him, so that's what happens. Well, there... there we go. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's move on. Let's move, yeah. Nice. This is our final game for Barbarian Block. This... is Savage. <gasps> Savage! This intro, I saw it for the first time ever last night, and it actually made me scream, holy shit. <laughs> That's what I- okay. Okay, that makes sense. Are you ready? That's a fucking intro. Oh my god, Danny. Can you believe that? Holy shit. Just the game blasting music at you as loudly as possible and then screaming the game's name right in your face. And here there's a very, very, very long intro text that scrolls very, very slowly. slowly but it an talks about an orgy of, of violence. violence. Oh my god. 
Uh, not much violence going on uh, between these two guys. They yeah, seem to be just nice kind of, they're yeah. just talking it out. So from here, I don't think you can proceed. You actually have to reboot the game in order to choose uh, to start the game instead of the intro. So let's do that. I know you're already sold, though. Like, whatever comes after this, you want to see it. <laughs> Play game one, and I do want to unlimited lives. There we go. So what kind of game is Savage? Well, it's a game that has the best soundtrack of all time. I'm just going to let that statement float there. No, uh, it does. It has quite a You can't challenge this. Yeah. Here we go. Prepare for Savage. No, we want sound effects off. We definitely do. Believe me. Savage! Oh, this song is so good. I'm... Savage. Make sure people can hear this. Yeah, let us know if it's too quiet, but... Savage. Savage. about all Amiga games just having the sickest soundtrack even if it makes no sense whatsoever. It is! <laughs> this Amiga rave music does not make sense for barbarians. On the other hand, this is the perfect music for this game. <laughs> Teeter asks if we're still playing Savage. I'm not sure. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, this is so good. Mm -hmm. uh, the opponent quoting the Narca soundtrack. Yeah. You're busted. Hi. Shit. So this, this track here is seven minutes long. You can listen to it on YouTube. Thank God for YouTube for being able to uh, provide people with the Savage soundtrack on a moment's notice. And honestly, that's the best way to experience it, because the game, not that special. <laughs> Especially if you're playing with, uh, without invincibility. But you can't argue against this soundtrack. I love this soundtrack Whatever argument so you much. have, it's invalid. Because <laughs> listen to it. Just a bunch of grunts and screaming and the word savage. I can actually finish this first part. So this game is divided up into three parts. There's this. Uh, the second level is, weirdly enough, I think a Space Harrier clone? And then the final level is this weird uh, exploration platformer where you control a bird or something. You never see this dude ever again. It's just basically three entirely different games crammed together with the best soundtrack of all time. Just incredible. be warned, nearly impossible to play without cheating. Luckily there are trainers available. Hey, what year did Savage come out? This was actually pretty early. I want to say this was in the 80s, even. Maybe 88 or 89? This also came out for the Atari ST, but no other platform has the soundtrack to my knowledge, so you want to play this on Amiga. Skeleton Snake! Yes! It's, Everybody! It's look. rolling oranges at me. <laughs> Why? Why do I ask? It's it's savage. I fucking no matter love what you. reason anything is in this game, it's here for a purpose, and it serves to make this game wonderful. Uh, according to B. Borkin uh, from Merck, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name. Uh, 1989. 89, okay. Yeah. Savage. We call this genre of music barbcore. <laughs> You gotta be a barb to fully appreciate it. Like, you can appreciate it if you're just like a normal civilian, but if you've served time as a barbarian, it'll make more sense to you. Mm. It also came out, um, I saw the, uh, previous 
came out in 1988 on Spectrum and uh, Commodore 64. So. Oh, so it was upported. To the yeah, internet. interesting. And I see that they went really hard on the music because it does have a Spectrum look to it. I, I can't describe it, but something about it kind of yeah. does. Yeah, there's a lot of Spectrum games that use these really large character sprites. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a conversation for another time if we ever play Spectrum games, but mm -hmm. those, like this system, uh, the Spectrum also has a good number of good games that are all but unknown here in the West. Maybe we'll check it out sometime. I would definitely need to do my research on that one, though, because, whew, way beyond my knowledge. Can I just... Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. The special barb beam. <laughs> There's the barb teleporter. bad at this. <laughs> I'm not a barbarian, though. Look, this one has a cape, too, just like in Sword of Sedan. Yeah, is that but... A, is that a regional variant to the whole uh, barbarian attire? <laughs> the cape? Yeah, Conan didn't need no cape. Yeah, but this is... I, I was gonna say this is Europe, and in Europe just barbarians wear capes, but I... <laughs> I don't... Citation I, I, needed, Alex. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I'm pretty sure I just made that out uh, yep. of wholesale. Uh, Shaq's calling that beam we went through the telebar. <laughs> Good. Oh, I can detect with just lightning now. That's cool. Okay, Bivorg, I'm a, I believe you when you say that we should play this game, but I don't... I don't in some ways. <laughs> They're suggesting Fat Worm Blows a Sparky. On the spectrum. Um, I've heard that title actually. Uh, is what that good? The fuck? I have no idea. Eric I'm out. I did it. I did it. Everybody use that code to access level two of Savage. That's so good. Oh, game over. I don't even get to continue. <laughs> All right. That's Savage. Holy shit. That ruled. Yeah. Yeah. There's not much you can do to follow up with that.